previously on Spinelli Speaks. So the winner of today's review was Alice Walker's The Color Purple. <laughs> Hi everyone, Danny here. Welcome back to my channel. Today is another day of our 31 days of book reviews. So make sure you stay to the end of the video to vote in tomorrow's review. Remember, it is your choice which book I review for tomorrow. Now today's book was another landslide vote for Sarah Green's Water for Elephants. We had about four votes for Fried Green Tomatoes, but don't worry, Fried Green Tomatoes will go back on that comeback pile and it will be back later in the month. But let's talk about Water for Elephants. Now this book was all the rage a couple of years ago. Um, it was on the New York Times bestsellers. They've made a major motion picture um, with Reese Witherspoon and Robert Pattinson. Um, and I have to tell you, at that time, I really did not want to read this book. I really don't like reading books when they're in a huge hype and everyone's talking about them because I feel like that really ruins the story for me. So I was thoroughly pleased with this book now that the dust has settled and I had a chance to read it with my book club. Now what Water for Elephants is about, it is about a man named Jacob who has just lost his parents and um, jumps onto a circus train, literally. He joins the circus. <laughs> now, he doesn't realize that right off the bat, um, but he somehow uh, finds himself with a, a traveling circus. And he has just left uh, school at Cornell where he was studying to be a veterinarian. Uh, so that's kind of the role he plays within this story. So he has a uh, affinity toward all of the animals and he takes care of those animals and then meets um, one of the performers named Marlena uh, through that process um, and they become friends and get to know one another and it gets a little romantic um, but Marlena is married to this man named August who I have to say even though he is technically the villain of the story he is probably the most interesting and compelling character in the entire book. Um, he is categorized by the people in the book as a paranoid schizophrenic, which if you can imagine that kind of character who then is married to Marlena and then this young man comes in who has an affinity of animals and Marlena is a performer with the animals, you can imagine he probably is very uh, suspect of their relationship. So yeah, there's that whole dynamic. Now what I will say is overall, when I set this book down, I was thoroughly pleased. I enjoyed my reading of this book. I enjoyed the story. There were pieces of the story that I felt really, you know, encaptured my imagination. Um, and I, I had a great time reading this book. Now, as a person who has studied literature and has come back around and like think about it for a little while, there's a lot to be said about how flat some of these characters are. Like I said before, August is the most compelling character. I feel like he is the most interesting. You get so much um, information about his, his background and why he is the way he is. And then for Jacob and Marlena, who are seemingly the main characters, they're super flat. They, I mean, you you feel like you know them, but you also, when it's all said and done, feel like you didn't really get to know them. So there is a little bit of a prob. It's problematic in the sense that as a critic, I feel like the two main characters are pretty flat. 
But overall, like I said, when I set this book down, I was like, that was a really good book. Another thing that's interesting about this book is it actually has a dual timeline. So you have the opening timeline of Jacob when he is 90 or 93. He doesn't know which one. So it's 90 or 93. Because at that age, you're, who's counting, right? Um, and he's in a nursing home and he's really going through or struggling with, you know, not having an able body anymore and having to be cared for and the food's not great and all that. Um, and then a circus rolls into town uh, and it sets up basically in front of the nursing home. So he's kind of reminiscing and that's how the story kind of starts. Um, and then you come back and forth. So you go back into the 1920s when they are doing the circus and then you come back to Jacob in the nursing home. So it's really interesting to have that kind of narration where you see this Jacob in two parts of his life and how the storyline comes together. Um, so from the beginning to obviously the end. And we don't get his whole lifetime. We really just get these three months that he's in the circus um, and then when he's in the nursing home. Um, and it's just really interesting. And there's um, this elephant. Obviously, I'm not going to go through a whole review and forget to mention the elephant. But there's an elephant, Rosie, and she is really the, I would say, catalyst to Jacob and Marlena getting a little closer uh, and August really coming to and a huge explosion of his craziness. So um, Rosie's great and she's really fun to read and it really kind of makes me want to read about other elephants. So I really like that. If you look at the author's note, which being surprised, I usually don't read author's notes, <laughs> but this particular author's note really kind of gave us a little bit of an insight of how the story came to be as far as, you know, being based on real elephants, not just one, but a couple um, combined. So there's a few um, things that happen in the book that actually happened to other elephants. So that was really interesting. Um, all in all, I would say if you're interested in circuses or you like that kind of atmosphere, you like performing, you like, um, you know, to hear kind of that 1920s almost I would say almost like a historical fiction, um, then definitely jump into this one. It's super fun. Like I said, when I laid it down, I enjoyed it. It's a nice fluff book that you just feel good about at the end. And I mean, obviously there is a little bit of animal, I wouldn't say torture, but there's definitely abuse. But I would say it's not the worst that I've ever seen in a book. So definitely pick this one up. I had lots of fun with it. It was great. Um, definitely a read that you can just kind of, you know, enjoy yourself in. So yeah, that's Water for Elephants. Now we have our two selections for tomorrow's review and I have a feeling already which one's going to win, but I'm going to go ahead and give you the choice anyways. One of which is a comeback um, and that is our uh, Kristen Laverenstatter, The Wreath by Sigrid Unset. Um, this is a Norwegian classic. Um, it's the first in a trilogy. Um, so if you would like to hear what this one is about, and I, I apologize for the reflection, reflection there. Um, but yeah, Sigrid Unset's Kristen Laverenstatter, The Wreath. That's a Norwegian classic. Um, and then we have The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. Um, I have a feeling this one's going to win because um, it's newer. And look at this cover. I mean, that's a cover by if I've ever heard one. Uh, so The House in the Cerulean Sea is your second choice. So in the comments below, go ahead and let me know or surprise me and get Kristen Lavernstetter in for tomorrow. Um, but until next time, I hope you all are reading something great, taking care and staying safe. And as always, you know how it goes. Happy reading. Bye.